Hi, it's Mary Jo again from Mary Jo Haney Design Studio. Are you ready for glue and cardboard? Thank you, are. Come on, listen to me. Let's start by talking about cardboard. I use two types of cardboard. The first is crescent board. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. It's sturdy and is something I can cut with my scissors or utility knife. And the other is railroad board, which is quite bendable. To cut the cardboard, I use a good pair of uh, Ginger scissors that I've specified for cardboard only and I mark the scissors with a piece of tape so I know that that's what they're for. And then I also use a utility knife that has a sharp blade. Sharper is better. I need a pencil with a really sharp fine tip and I'll use a grid lined ruler. On the ruler um, I'll put double folded tape so that when I am cutting against the cardboard, uh, the, the tape helps it to stick and, and the ruler won't move. And I also use sandpaper now and then. Here's my sturdy pattern. And what you want to do is angle your, your pencil inward while you trace. Trim away some of the excess cardboard because it will get in the way and it will cause me not to get as close or it will attack me while I'm tr working on trying to get rid of something else. So I just do that first and then we're going to start cutting. So I use a combination of techniques. I'll use the, the utility knife and I'll use the scissors and it, a lot of it depends on the mood I'm in or <laughs> how things are going. When I do use the scissors, I, I put my finger underneath um, and edge it up all the way to the edge of the line that has to be cut and then I cut out and I, I move my finger as I go. Um, and that helps to keep the blade, it's kind of like a uh, blade guard, keeps, uh, keeps the blade where I want it to be. The last thing I'll do is I'll go through and I'll do a little bit of sanding. As you can see, it doesn't have to be a very new or fresh piece of sandpaper. Let's talk about laminating tools. You need, first off, an opened out brown paper bag, which you can tape in place. Next, you need a plastic tray to hold one wet and one dry rag. You need another plastic tray or a paper plate to hold glue. You will need a three inch disposable roller found at the hardware store. It usually comes with its own tray. Don't purchase a foam roller. Next, have some toothpicks handy. And last but not least, you need Aline's Original Formula Tacky Glue. No exceptions, unless it's Aline's Thin Body Tacky Glue. You don't need anything fancier or thicker, you just need this. Keep the glue in a cup in the upside down position with the cap on when not in use. Okay, let's get ready to laminate. Pour about a two inch dollop of glue into the upper portion of the glue tray. For the banner front, I am using the crescent board piece. Take the glue roller into the glue, coat it with an even but not gloppy coating of glue, test the roller, then roll glue onto a piece of crescent board. 
The right side of the cardboard is usually the side from which you cut out the cardboard. Position it onto my fabric and I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna not be wasteful with the fabric. So once you get it on, get your hands clean, flip it, and then we're gonna do what I call embossing. So embossing is where, I mean, you can't even see it. You can see it a lot in um, when you work with velvet, but what I'm doing is running my fingers around all the edges of this shape. Because you don't want the, the, the fabric to pull away from the cardboard at, at any place. If that happens, then the adherence won't be perfect and it'll get little dumb little bubbles in it. So you can see it's it's not it's it's attached everywhere. Trim the fabric away from the cardboard. Leave a generous one quarter inch seam allowance all around and use your fabric scissors for this task. Trim the fabric away at the outer corners, clip the concave curves, and clip the inward corners. Using the roller, coat the edge of the cardboard. Come in with the glue a little bit more than the seam allowance. Wrap the fabric seam allowance snugly from the back to the front and onto the glue. Let's see how I'm doing this thumb action thingy. And by doing that, I'm finding the very edge of the cardboard. So then what I do is what is something that's called flip and flatten. So I turn it over on my work surface and I flatten the whole thing and then pick it up again. I'm going to check my work surface, make sure there's no glue on it. And what you want is to have a precise shape. <laughs> okay, so let's finish it up. Okay, so I'm going to flip and flatten that again. Always flip and flatten, always flip and flatten. You don't want any bulk created um, by the by the glue or by the fabric. So the last thing I'll do is what I call tapping. Tap the tap the corners. I mean this look turned out really well but some fabrics are not as reasonable as others. So I'll tap the corner and then I'll just take my fingers and smooth any phrase out. One thing that's important is when you're cutting with the fabric, you have to leave enough fabric that it can wrap around the edge of the cardboard. So in some cases that's a sixteenth of an inch. So that is our front piece for our banner. Now let's laminate the banner back cardboard piece using your banner back fabric. Use your fabric sparingly. The excess will be used to make the easel in the next lesson. Okay, so now we have the front and back ready to go, and we're going to move on to building the easel in the next lesson. <laughs>